Hello everyone, um, this is Miriam Janaki. Welcome to our first episode in our Sunday discussion show. Uh, I have Miriam Saud with me. Hi, can you hear me? Hi everyone, good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So uh, for today's show, we will be talking about the attachment theory. But before we start talking about it and discussing it, We'll first introduce ourselves since it's a new show. We want to give you an idea about who are the hosts, uh, what is this show, how does it go, what we'll be talking about in the other episodes. And then we will introduce our topic and then we will continue talking about it. Okay? So, um, Miriam, do you want to start introducing yourself or you'd rather let me do that first? Okay, for sure, yeah. Uh, I'll start introducing myself. Um, so, good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning into our show. Uh, my name is Mariam Saoud. I am a, uh, I'm 20 years old, and I am a third-year student at the Teachers Training College in Buzaria. Um, some, if you want, should we talk about hobbies, Mariam? Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Tell us what your hobbies, about what you like, and your favorite shows, maybe books i don't know all right wonderful okay so uh in what we should include in our introduction we'll be talking about our hobbies um our favorite show um our favorite movie and our favorite book which is going to be just for fun and maybe to help you get to know us a little um so my hobbies are um uh, reading uh, i love to read a lot and i love to write and I also love to meditate. Um, my favorite show would be um, a show that maybe a lot of you are familiar with, which is called um, Shabab Talk, uh, which is on DW in Arabic. I really love everything that goes on in the show, the type of topics that they talk about, um, the way they tackle them, and I'm mostly a huge fan of the host. Um, one of my favorite movies, actually, I will love to mention too, movies which are um, very dear to my heart and which have influenced me so much. Um, I love the movie The Poet Society um, and it? the other one is Freedom Riders which I highly highly recommend. They are mostly about education and they are um, done in a very creative way. What was the um, first movie? Yeah, and my favorite book uh, or the book that I have actually been influenced the most by is um, an Algerian one, and it's called... I'm sorry, Mariam, can you say that again? Uh, I said, could you tell us about your f uh, the first movie, because it wasn't... Mariam, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't hear uh, the, the title of the first movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the first movie I uh, mentioned was Dead Faith, which is uh, a very old movie, actually, um, starring uh, Robin Williams, uh, May He Rest in Peace. Uh, it's about education, and it's uh, very creative, it's about poetry and all of that. Uh, yeah, and the second movie was Freedom Riders, which is also about education um, and creative ways in teaching. Um, yeah, so my book is actually Algerian. I was very, very much inspired and influenced by it. Um, and it's called Inside the Battle of Algiers oh, yeah. uh, by one of our uh, freedom fighters, uh, Zora Bir. That's amazing. I love okay. that book, too. So that's, that's all about me. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, uh, let's move on to you, Maria. Yeah. Well, this, this is going to be very confusing for our audience because we're both called Maryam. And I really hope that I will be able to make the difference just here in our voices. <laughs> exactly. I, well, yeah, I really hope that. <laughs> yeah. so, so, my name is Miriam Janati. I'm 20 years old. And I'm a student of um, English and American Literature and Civilization. I will be graduating in this few weeks. And I hope I will be able to continue my master's degree in translation. As for my hobbies, uh, just like Miriam, I really love reading. I used to be really passionate about writing, but I haven't been writing that often anymore. And I like um, to 
not only read like novels, but I like to read about different topics on the internet. And um, I also love to crochet like an old lady. <laughs> As for my favorite wow, show... Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know about that. Well, I really I like to, to do work. <laughs> I'm sure you've already seen one, like the scarves that I, I wear in the winter. Oh, so those are made by you? Yeah, yeah. I like making scarves. I adore that's scarves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As for my favorite shows, um, I'm not much of a show person, but lately I... I became fond of the Big Bang Theory. I'm like a really lazy person and I don't like to go and look up a series even though my friends um, suggest to me series all the time but I feel too lazy to go and look them up on the internet. So I started watching the Big Bang Theory just because my sister uh, puts on this uh, TV channel and they have the Big Bang Theory all the time. It's all the time there so I find myself watching random episodes and I really like it, it's funny. Um, I, I can't really give my favorite book or movie because it's really really hard for me to put them into categories I have different favorite movies and different favorite books but let's sum it up by saying that my favorite author is Stephen King so most of my favorite books are written by him <laughs> as for the movie my favorite movie is also an adaptation of Stephen King's work and it's called The Shawshank Redemption it's really amazing and I recommend oh it God. for everyone. <laughs> it's an amazing movie, honestly. And that's all about me. Yes, I totally agree on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our audience will probably get to know us better uh, through the different episodes that we'll be hosting. Yes, I'm sure. And maybe they will get to differentiate us through our <laughs> yeah. favorite books, maybe. I hope so. Here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's tell okay, um, Yeah, mm -hmm. let's tell them about the show, why we chose to make this show and stuff like that. Alright, so um so for this show, uh, we had actually struggled a lot with the title. We wanted to get something <laughs> creative, but then we ended up with uh, Sunday's discussion. Very uh, creative. Which is as simple as it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just going to be a discussion between two girls that are named Mariam about different <laughs> topics. That's basically uh, the core of the show. Um, we decided to start it because we are passionate and interested in a lot of things. And uh, for me personally, I watched a lot of documentaries. I got to read a lot of things. And so the more I got information on... Um, the, the clearer I had, uh, the clearer my image was about, about a lot of things. And so I thought uh, maybe making a show that would also help us um, introduce a lot of other things to the audience, um, make them know about certain things would be uh, so interesting. Um, the, the purpose of the show would be to, um, as we said, inform and also introduce some topics. So the thing is that we will not be going so deep into most of the topics. We will only make research and then present the information that we uh, can find. And so that should give the chance to the audience to at least have an idea about something. And uh, maybe if they are interested and in, they find it interesting, they can uh, go and research more about it. Um, most of our episodes should be uh, a discussion between me and Miriam. We will be tackling different points that relate to one topic that we should choose um, on every episode. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and our topics will be uh, about, di like, they will be really different. For example, now our topic is rather psychological, but we can talk about history, um, psychology, no, psychology, yeah, we're talking about psychology. I mean, sociology and different other fields. So that's why we decided to name it Sunday's Discussion, because we don't want to limit ourselves to uh, one field only. So we're really excited to have this show. Yeah. And as you already exactly. know... Exactly, and we thank everyone who... Mm -hmm. 
yeah, well, we thank everyone who tuned in and uh, we hope to present more and more diverse content in the upcoming episodes. Yeah. yeah. So as you already know, our topic of the day is the attachment theory. And um, personally, I'm really interested in this theory because I feel like it really, when once you have at least a basic understanding of the theory, you can understand yourself and the um, the relationships you have, especially the intimate relationships in your life. You'll understand what kind of um, attachment style you have and that you developed in your childhood. And then you have a better understanding of yourself and of your partner too and your friends and family and so on. So maybe you can work on yourself and that will make you feel better about the type of relationships that you're having in your life. And as Miriam already stated, uh, we are not majoring in psychology or anything like that. So um, the information we'll be given on the topic is rather broad and uh, it's the basic understanding of the theory. So in case you have extra information that you want us to share, um, share it in the comment section in our Facebook page or in the chat box. And if we ma maybe if we make a mistake, don't hesitate to correct us and we will be um, sharing the information and correcting our mistakes happily in our Facebook page. All right. Yes, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, Miriam and I decided to uh, talk about the two major attachment theories. So there is the behaviorist theory, which is the um, it wasn't called the attachment theory, but it's like the, the first understanding of the attachment that people develop in their childhood. And then it moved on to the theory of attachment by Bowlby. And I'll be starting by talking about the, this behaviorist theory, attachment. All right, so according to the behaviorist, uh, attachment is a set of learned behaviors. So like children uh, don't have the at attachment they are not born with an attachment to their parents or their mothers specifically they they learn this behavior and then they develop it and the basis of learning this attachment to the behavior is, is the provision of food that is to say that when the feeder gives food to the infant the infant will develop a type of attachment to the feeder because of the food and for those who don't have don't know about the uh, behaviorist theory, uh, behaviorist behaviorism was developed by a, a, a physiologist, a Russian physiologist named uh, Pavlov. And in his theory, basically, uh, he states that two stimuli are linked together, and these stimuli are the, responsible for the kind of behaviors that we develop throughout our lives. So, for example, if you want to link this to the attachment theory, you will think that um, when the mother feeds the baby, the baby is given a sense of comfort when he is fed. Therefore, he develops an attachment to his mother. So, according to this theory, there is no attachment to the mother, like innate attachment to the mother from the infant. And to explain this um, uh, conditioning, theory better, we will talk about the, um, the experiment that Pavlov made to explain his theory. So the most famous experience made by Pavlov is called a uh, little Al Albert is experience. And in this experience, they brought a kid, a uh, baby, nine months old, and his name is Albert. They put him in a, in a room and they put near him uh, a white rat, uh, a rabbit, a monkey, and a few masks. And when the, the kid was presented to these items, he didn't show any uh, obvious response like fear or anything. He was rather neutral to these items. But then um, the kid was given uh, a rat. He was near the rat and he still didn't show any obvious response. But he then had a hammer struck behind him. And the noise of that the hammer made uh, made him get scared and he started crying so when he got when the baby turned nine uh, eleven months old 
uh, they started showing him the rat right after the hammer is struck. And this, be, uh, this, um, uh, this action was repeated several times. So the baby started getting scared just by the seeing the rat because he connected the sound of the hammer with the, the, the appearance of the rat. And, uh, and then th this kid uh, started having um, fear and phobia towards any object that looks like the rat. His parents said that he was scared from the cat that they had because it was white and he saw similar features to it that looked like the rat. And uh, other objects that he related to the rat. So, to according to the behaviorist, that's how um, the baby develops uh, his attachment with his mother by learned behaviors, um, as well as the uh, other uh, behavior theory, theory, which is called the um, operant conditioning, and it's a method of learning that occurs through rewards and punishments. So. When, uh, when we make um, an action and then we are punished, we are less likely to repeat that behavior. And when we are rewarded, we want to repeat this, um, this action because it gives a, a, pleasant, rea um, a pleasant consequence. Uh, so that's why the infants, for example, when the infant cry, cries, uh, his mother will probably uh, hug him and give him uh, attention so the baby links the attention given to him the consequence with the, the crying therefore they start repeating this kind of behaviors like crying smiling because it gives them uh, what they want so um, to put it in a in a simple sentence uh, the babies uh, according to the theory, uh, the behaviorists, the babies are only developing their uh, their the, their attachment uh, according to uh, the uh, the learned behaviors, and not because they are innate or they are born with them. So yeah, we will move to Marim, who will give um, a different perspective towards how infants develop their uh, attachment style. Uh, according to other theories. Okay, thank you, Mariam, for that clarification um, and for talking about the behaviorist uh, point of view of uh, attachment because Balbi, uh, uh, who is famous for his attachment theory, has uh, different views in addition to other researchers and psychologists. Um, so basically, basically, the child starts um, social interactions when he is at an early age, um, when uh, he is mostly in contact with his primary caregiver, which in most of the times is his mother, or sometimes it could be someone else, but some, but necessarily a primary caregiver is someone who is kind of the child, uh, taking care of them and feeding, feeding them. So he starts for forging his uh, very first relationships with this primary care caregiver um, and it is evident in the fact that when infants are between uh, the age of six and months uh, and eight months old they start to show a pattern known as separation anxiety as it was mentioned um, in in a sort in a book that um, I'm quoting it's called Gleitman uh, it's called psychology and it is by Gleitman um, so they start to show this pattern that's known as separation anxiety in which they become upset when the caregiver leaves the room and this in return shows that the child has form and to the caregiver so um, whenever he feels that the caregiver is not around to he's not around the child starts uh, being anxious and starts crying and starts looking for his caregiver so these are the first um, signs of his his attachment to his primary care caregiver. Um, so the attachment, uh, as it is defined by Balbi, is this strong and enduring emotional bond between the child and his caregiver, 
and uh, that psychologists actually consider as the basis for uh, relationships later in life. So what Balby argues, and here we will be introducing his theory, is that these, this type of attachments that a child has with uh, his primary caregiver act, are actually a basis for, his, for the type of relationships, and they can predict the way the child uh, would be with his partners or his friends or the people he will form relationships with later in life. Um, so this bond seems to grow from the psychological comfort the mother provides the child with. Um, unlike many behaviorists who said that uh, it's mainly uh, it's biological comfort that the mother provides the child. And these classical studies that were conducted by Harlow in uh, 1958 are uh, an experiment that he did with uh, a breed of monkeys called the rhesus monkeys. Uh, what they did is they, he separated uh, very young uh, baby monkeys from their mothers and then he put them in cages where uh, inside the cage he had they put two figures one figure that was in the wire and it had a sort it had sort of a nipple that was a source of nutrition it had the milk for the child so for the little uh, monkey to be fed he had to go or it had to go to the wiry figure that had that provided the food and then there was a second figure inside the cage that was made of cloth and that was softer and looked like a real monkey and so what Harlow did was he um, estimated or he counted the, t the amount of time that the monkey spent with each figure. And after a lot of, of, of after many experiments of, of this kind, he realized that the monkey had spent more time with the, the, the figure that was made of cloth that provided comfort for, for it rather than the figure that actually only provided food. And so even in, in uh, cases of threat, for example, when the baby monkey was approached by like a, a, mechanic, um, a mechanical toy that scared it, it ran towards the, the, the mother or the figure that was actually in cloth rather than the figure that provided uh, nutrition. And this, uh, this was argued by, um, by Harry Harlow saying, that this attachment actually also grows from the comfort and the, 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 the safety that the child feels with his primary caregiver. And uh, this adds to the argument of the British psycho psychiatrist John Balby, who argues that the comfort is the key to human attachment and not nutrition, which he um, confirms the studies of um, Harry Harlow. So he says that children actually become attached to a caregiver because this adult uh, provides a secure base for them. And this is the term he gave for this type of attack, for this uh, particular bond. He gave it the name of a secure base. So the child um, has like sort of like a safe haven, which is his mother or his primary caregiver. And this uh, kind of comfort or this kind of uh, feeling of a secure base comes from the, the psychological and the comfort that the child feels um, with the caregiver and not only the nutrition. So um, the secure base, according to Balbi, as he said, is this relationship or uh, this, yeah, this relationship in which the child feels protected and safe. So this primarily uh, is the basis for the attachment in the child, so this feeling of being protected by the mother and being safe. Um, yes, so this uh, child, or the child, uses this... Mm -hmm. Yes, but again? Yeah, I, I wanted to highlight that. Uh, um, according to uh, the attachment um, yes, theorists so like Balbi, uh, they believe that the attachment, the attachment relationship that the child develops with his parent is very important because it's like uh, the prototype for all the future social relationships that they will have in their life so if there is um, a certain problem that occurs during this uh, period where the child is developing the attachment with his um, caregiver it can really um, affect uh, and give severe consequences so yeah this point is really important the secure base 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, as he said, so this will shape the, the person's understanding and also um, interaction with the other, with the rest of the world and la his relationships later in life. It, ha it does indeed in affect that. And we will come to see, uh, we will come to see that more clearly when we uh, tackle the patterns or the types of attachment that uh, came through uh, Mary Ainsworth, uh, Ain yeah, Ainsworth's dream situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mary Ainsworth uh, did an experiment or a procedure to um, assess the attachment of the child to his primary ca caregiver. And this experiment that Mary did was called the strange situation. It was an experiment that was done um, to primarily assess, like to determine or categorize what type of attachment the child had to uh, his or her primary caregiver. So the experiment went like this. A 12 month old child was brought into an unfamiliar room with his mother and the room had many toys and uh, it had a very comfy and comfortable environment where the child could go and explore. And he was, his mother was sitting on a couch and the child was uh, playing with the toys. And then there was a, a stranger, someone who, who the child had never met or who, who is unfamiliar to the child, entered the room, um, chatted with the mother a little, and then um, the mother left the room. And so the child was left with uh, the stranger inside the room. And then the mother came back. So this was primarily the experiment that Mary Ainsworth did that was called the strange um, situation. And through this experiment, uh, she was able to identify according to the reaction of the child and the way um, the child handled the situation that they were put in, what type of attachment um, the child was uh, forming. Okay, so um, Mariam, would you like to start with the first one maybe, the first pattern? Yeah, so um, as you said, um, there are mainly for can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you uh there is just a, um, a small problem with the internet so our messages get to each other like a bit late but it's it's uh, it's working fine it's so um okay great and we we apologize for that <laughs> yeah unfortunately yeah. it's out of our hands um so yeah there are four main um attachment styles and the first one is the uh, secure attachment um, style. And this one is the uh, most common and the one that's, let's say, we would classify as healthy because um, basically when the child is um, growing up, he needs to explore the world. So um, when you notice that the child is exploring freely with when, when his caregiver is with him and when the child is able to engage with strangers and when he when the caregiver is gone the child will react in a, in a way that makes him look like he's upset and so on but once the the caregiver is back the child is happy he doesn't show uh, resentment or um, a distant behavior towards his caregiver uh, those children are mostly uh, with, with caregivers who are available most of the time. They either um, give frequent support to the child or they give uh, constant support to the child and they fulfill their needs. If a, if a child starts crying, you'll find that their mother, uh, who is mostly uh, the caregiver, will go to them, um, ease their uh, worries, uh, if they are afraid, they will they will seek support from their caregiver and so on. Uh, so these children will grow up to to develop uh, healthy relationships with um, with other people. Um, you will find that they they have trust. They don't have trust issues. Uh, they have lasting relationships. They tend to have good self esteem. They are comfortable sharing feelings with their partners or friends because they learned that. Um, when they talk about their problems, they are given positive support and um, because of their parents. So they, they, they grow up to develop good social skills. And this is the uh, first attachment style. Uh, the second one is the uh, ambivalent attachment style, 
uh, also known as the uh, anxious uh, attachment style. And um, this style is um, is characterized by uh, anxiety and ambivalent behavior. You'll find um, that the uh, the child is anxious uh, when their when their uh, caregiver is gone, and uh, when when their caregiver is back, they don't feel um, like the uh, threat is gone. They still feel uh, scared, maybe, and they don't trust their parents because they left them. So they start developing trust issues, and those will grow up to be uh, the adults who have. Um, Tr uh, trust issues, they worry that their partners don't like them, don't share their feelings. Uh, you'll have that, you'll find that these um, people will have often break, uh, break, breakups and they, they act cold and distant in the relationships, uh, especially if they, uh, they meet people who will uh, enhance these uh, trust issues with them. So, uh, Marim will continue with the other uh, two uh, attachment styles and we'll maybe give you more information uh, about this one. Okay, thank you for, for that, Marim. And so, th those were the two uh, first patterns of attachment or types of attachment. Um, I will move on to the third type of attachment that was... Um, that was made that was determined by uh, Mary Ainsworth, as we said in her experiments. Um, so it is called the anxious avoidant uh, type of attachment, and the children in this case are distant from the ma the mother. And I'm I'm mostly um, relating this to the experiment um, that to the strange situation that was conducted by Ainsworth. Um, so in this case. Uh, the, the children are distant from the mother even when she is in the room. So they don't interact with her so much. Um, they, they don't go often to her and they just play. Um, and then when she, she leaves, maybe they don't even notice. They are playing and they don't see that. And then they would look for her in her absence. But then when she returns, they would ignore her. And uh, this type of attachment is actually, uh, it becomes later in life a type of avoidment. They would avoid uh, telling about their feelings. They would avoid getting close to people, um, letting people into their lives. They would also find uh, a hard time um, trusting others and uh, being fu feeling fully trusted and depending on others. Um, so this was the uh, third uh, type that was called anxious avoidant. And then the other or the last type is called the disorganized uh, attachment, which is uh, children who, for example, let's give the example of uh, an orphan child who was brought up in an orphanage. And uh, inside this orphanage, they don't have like a primary caregiver who would um, for example, the staff in the orphanage is, is very busy and they have a lot of, ch a, a lot of kids to take care of. Um, so they don't um, focus on my child and give him all the, the comfort and all the support that they would give, like that the parent, I'm sorry about that, that a parent would give to um, their child. So they, th their ideas about comfort, about trust, about uh, love with others is a, a little bit disorganized. And so um, in the situation, in the strange situation, uh, the, the experiment of Ainsworth, this child, when the mother leaves the room, they have an unorganized way of dealing with this stress. They, they seem distressed when the mother is absent, and then sometimes they would uh, move away from her when she returns, they would cry a lot. Um, so they are very um, disorganized in their interaction or in their handling of this um, situation. And um, so I think this is about it for the, uh, for the types. Um, we have found a study actually um, that it, it was test. It uh, was posted in July 1985 uh, as a questionnaire in the Rocky Mountains News, which is a, a local Colorado newspaper, and it was conducted called Cindy Hazan and Philip Shaver. And so this experiment kind of 
uh, was very important and prominent in, in, in psychology um, back in the 80s and 90s. And so the questionnaire had actually asked readers to identify which of three statements they most likely or most uh, closely reflect who they are in love. So when a person is in love, how do they mostly feel? And they uh, should choose one of three options. And I will read out to you the options exactly as we have found them. So option A says, I find it relatively easy getting close to others and I feel comfortable depending on them and having them depend on me. I don't worry about being abandoned or about someone getting too close to me, uh, which as you can guess, would relate to the uh, secure okay. attachment, okay. Uh, where, we, where people uh, who uh, were securely attached to their caregivers find it easy to get close to people, to open up to people, to trust them, and to let them into their lives and to depend on them, have others um, depend on them and trust them as well. Option B says, I find that others are reluctant to get as close as I would like. I often worry that my partner doesn't really love me or won't want me to stay or won't want to stay with me. I want to get very close to my partner and this sometimes carries people away. And I believe, as you can guess, this is the um, anxious, uh, resistant or ambivalent type. Um, this is... Uh, option B um, and then we have option C that says I am somewhat uncomfortable being close to others uh, I find it difficult to trust them completely difficult to allow myself to depend on them I am nervous when anyone gets too close and often others want me to be more intimate than I feel comfortable being and this is closely related to the attachment type anxious avoidant which is uh, people who um, avoid others who are always scared to um, <clears throat> let people close, get close to them and open up to others. Um, so we, uh, me and Mariam thought about introducing this questionnaire to you and uh, we will create a poll later in the page where we would want you to try to identify uh, with one of these uh, three categories, which category do you feel most that you can relate to, either in your friendship, in your relationship, uh, mostly something, uh, a relationship in which you have uh, closeness to another person, or you, um, yeah, you, you, you express some certain um, comfort or closeness to someone. Yeah, we'll also share uh, more articles um, related to this topic. So, so uh, Mariam, would you maybe want to uh, maybe try to go to one of these categories? Yeah, well, uh, as I was saying, we will also share different um, mm -hmm. other articles related to the topic. So um, you can have uh, a deeper understanding of these theories and of yourselves. And we will also share... Um, short videos that are easier to follow up follow up with also related to this um to this topic there are a few videos that i watched that actually uh it's thanks to these videos that i got familiar with this uh, attachment theory and um as i'm sure some of you are familiar with i saw these videos on the youtube channel called school of life um they were really focusing on these two um attachment theories uh, the avoidant and the anxious type because uh, studies have the conducted studies have shown that um, these two uh, attachments they are like very unhealthy to be together and yet people uh, anxious people and distant people tend to find themselves interested in each other and I find that's really that, and I find that really interesting because um, as we said the anxious type will will be i mean you see people uh, i mean your friends telling you about their partners or your previous partners there are people that you would uh, label as clingy and they are the type that would ask for affection would uh, repeatedly ask repeatedly ask you um if you still have feelings for them um if you get uh, distant for a while, for a short while, or if you are not available, they will start uh, panicking, thinking that you don't love them anymore. You are leaving them. 
and um, yeah so this is the uh, the anxious type and distant type you will find these people uh, they invest less in their emotions and relationships and they express little distress when relationship and so the they they are kind of careless about if uh, how will the relationship will end up and they often avoid intimacy and use excuses to do that and research research has shown that these adults with an avoidant attachment style are more accepting and likely to engage in casual sex or let's say in those relationships that uh, last only for a week or a month uh, maximum so you can imagine how terrible it is to uh, to find a couple that have um, these two kinds because they don't really match and um, I really find it uh, interesting because I personally um, relate to the anxious type but at the same time sometimes I feel like I'm a distant type and I can't really know for sure uh, it's it's rather confusing what about you Marie? what do you think do you relate to any of these styles Um, it's a little bit hard to say. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when you were talking about um, the, uh, I think the resistant um, style. I remember a friend of mine who was like that, and we had actually been in like a friendship that lasted like almost six years, and she had always like been constantly like, "Do you, where are you? Like, talk to me. Why are you not answering?" And and that kind of stayed with me actually so now like when I'm dealing with people uh, if like I don't answer them right away or if I um, for example will um, ignore them for a second or something I feel anxious and I feel stressed that they might think that I don't care about them anymore mm -hmm. and so I would always look for ways to show that, that I still care um, <laughs> this yeah. was maybe between brackets it just um, reminded me of that but it kind of can tell uh, maybe a little a bit about the type of attachment that I might have and I, um, I would probably go with um, the avoidant mm -hmm. um, I've seen that in a relationship I've had and I'm, I'm always like always too scared to let the person in and to uh, easily open up or easily trust them and uh, also share that trust and so I, I, I would <laughs> maybe identify more with the uh, avoidant type yeah, it's hard for me to tell because sometimes I, I'm avoidant and sometimes sometimes I'm anxious, so I can't really tell. But I think I tend to be more anxious in general and in certain things I am rather distant. There's also an interesting thing about the disorganized attachment style. Um, the, oh. the, uh, the example we gave is of an orphan, but there is something that I noticed in parents in here in Algeria. And it makes me worry that uh, their children will grow up to have this attachment style. Um, there are some uh, psychologists who argue that parents who act as like uh, both as a figure um, as figures of both fear and reassurance to a child, they contribute to uh, this attachment style. Because, for example, um, the mother will uh, start uh, scaring her child, or she starts beating him. And then suddenly, um, she will start, when he starts crying, for example, she starts hugging him and kissing him. And uh, this sudden change of emotion uh, kind of confuses the child and he grow up to be, um, to have a disorganized attachment style because uh, the caregiver have both um, the scary uh, side and the reassurance side. So that's kind of messed up yeah you actually remind me of something uh, that's also related to the uh, avoidance style uh, uh, which is like mostly fathers in our society I, I it's in uh -huh. general of course not everyone is the same but in general fathers tend to be more like tough more scary and so um, if you for example want to um, maybe express your feelings or maybe for example you are too loud or you are um, I don't know like and the father reacts to you in a violent way or he, uh, 
yells at you and she's like always this scary figure in, in your in mm -hmm. your mind then you will grow up to uh be uh more let's say maybe shy or avoiding telling about your feelings to others always scared because with your dad you always try to kind of repress those feelings so that your dad doesn't get angry or, your, mm -hmm. or so that you avoid your dad's um, anger and avoid being afraid of him. And so ca that kind of develops uh, a type of avoidant attachment in you as a child and as you grow up. Uh, I, I can see that link, oh. yeah. So, uh, as I said, this... Um, this videos that I watched that focus mainly on the anxious and avoidant uh, type, I will be sharing them on the face our Facebook page and also on our Twitter. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, and I hope that you are interested in this topic and that you will actually watch them to uh, have a better understanding of the topic. Yeah. So I guess uh, this sums it up, Mariam. I think mm -hmm. we have come to. The end of um, our show, our first episode. The end of our episode. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. <Yay. laughs> yeah. I'm so happy that it was. We, it was really interesting. Uh, finally, we got to broadcast. <laughs> yeah, we we actually uh, want to apologize again because we were supposed to uh, broadcast this first episode uh, a few weeks ago, but we had technical problems that unfortunately were out of our hands, and we did our best to fix them as soon as possible and we're happy that everything is fixed and um, we will be regular with our um, episodes and uh, yeah we didn't mention that this show um, is not weekly so we won't be having um, these episodes every week it's rather a bi-weekly show and we will keep you updated about further information in our social media so yeah stay tuned with us so uh, shall we close? Definitely, yes um yeah do you yeah. want to add something okay um okay so i'd like uh no not really i would like to thank you mariam for um for this episode and for the great efforts that we have made together My pleasure. Um, and for hosting the show together for starting it um and uh, i would love to thank our, our audience everybody who tuned in we are sorry that this episode was a little bit late mm -hmm. um we will uh start we will for future episodes we'll start them a little bit earlier so you guys can tune in um we hope we have been uh, beneficial we have been helpful and if we have missed something, if there was something that we didn't get right, please don't hesitate to tell us in the comments to reach out for anything, and, and we can definitely provide you with more resources. Maria will be posting about a lot of the articles we mm -hmm. um, had used for the uh, for our research, and um, I'm super glad that um, that we are hosting this show and. Just as we said, we hope to be beneficial and to help you get uh, ideas about a lot of things. I'm looking forward for future episodes, and yeah, stay tuned, please. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much, and I hope we will see you again in our next episode. Stay tuned. Good night.